Hello everybody, I'm 13 from over at Squirrel Dealer. Tonight I'm actually going to be giving you a breakdown of pretty much the most powerful search engine that we've had from Magic the Gathering so far. So this is actually going to be a how-to video on how to scryfall. First we're going to start off by going over the card layout and then doing a couple of sample queries. Hopefully we'll be done pretty quick with this one. Uh, I'll also try to post some timestamps below if you feel like you're already pretty familiar with it and just want to get to something a little bit more complicated. But this is scryfall. So Scryfall is a very, very powerful database, like I was saying. The most important thing here is the fact that you can actually run SQL-like queries against all the cards that are currently in Magic's history, as well as some of the metadata collected from outside of Wizards. So first thing I'm going to do is go over what a card layout looks like. So if you are familiar with the game, you probably know what a lot of these fields are, but I kind of have to go over them so that you know what you're actually going to be searching for when you use Scryfall. So Obviously, we're going to be using Squirrel Dealer here. It's our website. We do a full breakdown, and this is going to be our card of choice. So we have the title selected here. Uh, basically, it's just what you're searching for. So when you actually go to your query, you're just going to query for Squirrel Dealer, and the card should pop up. Pretty simple, but we're going to break it down to be a little bit more complicated. Next up, we have the converted mana cost of the card. The entire mana cost is in the top right-hand side, and it actually gets broken down into a couple of things. First and foremost, it's converted mana cost for this card is one. So if we're looking for something like collected company, the converted mana cost can be used as a comparison. You can use less than, greater than, less than, equal to, and just do a full breakdown here and try to figure out what's relevant for you. Uh, on top of that, we also get to search for the actual mana cost itself. In this instance, it's just a single green mana. So you're gonna represent that with the curly brackets with the mana cost inside. We will get to a point that we're looking at Phyrexian mana, hybrid mana, and uh, two colorless slash colored mana. Uh, we'll cover that, but for now, let's just keep it simple. The color identity, sorry, the color of this card is green, that's shown by the border, and the identity for commander reasons is actually just green. So this gets a little bit more involved with uh, shards and wedges and all that, but we'll cover that in a moment. Next is the type line. So the type line is going to cover both the super types like creature, legendary, snow, all those fun things as well as the actual type line of the card because this was from unstable we actually have a raccoon li lizard bird uh, either way he's selling squirrels it's fantastic but anything within the type line is actually going to be covered by the t colon parameter here so we're going to be using that to filter cards based on what we actually want to see as far as permanents go then the next section we're going to cover is the oracle text the oracle text is actually the rules uh, I believe Scryfall actually goes off of what the current Oracle text is, not what's written on the card. But the main things to note here is Oracle text has squirrel in several places. So we're going to get a true response if we just search for Oracle text squirrel. Uh, we also get it by putting quotes around creature token. Quotes works pretty similarly to Google where this has to be an exact match for anything within the quotes. And then something kind of specific to Silver Border is we can search for outside of the game. Next up, we get power and toughness. Uh, they are just shorthanded to pow and tau, I guess is probably the best way to say that. Again, we do get to use comparisons for less than equals to. And if we actually put them in uh, parentheses, it will actually respect it for order of operations and try to make sure that either or or and are respected within it. So this is going to be anything with power less than two or power than greater than four, which of course our squirrel dealer falls under both situations, so it'll be good. Uh, next, we end up covering the addition. So the addition is actually marked with its three letter set code, which is in the bottom left hand side of the card. Uh, you can do it with E for addition or just set. The nice thing about Scryfall is, like I said, they do collect a lot of metadata to show you. And this is actually just a breakdown of what Unstable looks like, how many cards it has, when it was released, the expected value of the set. And uh, we also get rarity common here for the actual section here, as well as the C at the bottom for rarity. So we can use rarity to filter out common cards if we're trying to exclude them, make them uh, try to get more powerful cards, or we can include them if we're looking for popper, although we'd probably use the format flag for that. 
Next up, we have flavor text. I'm assuming most people won't want to use this, but we do have top quality squirrels with sheen and fur. And then we also get to mark the, use the watermark. So the watermark is actually this section right here, the Crossbreed Labs, if you play it on stable, is the uh, biology set that basically was hybriding everything and crossbreeding, but that's actually gonna be the watermark used for both guilds and guilds of Ravnica, uh, shards, wedges, basically, if there is the watermark on the card, you're gonna access that with the WM. Last but not least, we have our artist. So you can do a partial match on the name, you can put it in quotes and get a perfect match. We also do get a couple of unique flags like new art, uh, if we're getting a reprint with a new set of art or unique art, if we are looking for a specific card like a lightning bolt and see all the different arts that have been printed on it. Last but not least, I'm not gonna cover all of these in the video because we will do a couple of sample queries here, but some additional flags that you can do, formats, identities for commander, Frames, if you do happen to like old frames, you can flag for anything within a uh, language. Uh, I am a huge fan of Vintage Cube. If you're just looking for a list of all the cards, you can actually just search for Cube Vintage. They'll pull up all the cards on MTGO's Vintage Cube. Uh, this one is actually super unique here. So this is Date, Theros, and anything with US dollar greater than five. We'll get into that a little bit better, but we do have a couple of flags for what things are, including split cards, reserve cards, prices, and if something's a scheme or a plane. But that's basically all we need to cover there. Now on to the actual searching itself. So I do have a couple of examples I'm gonna go over. First and foremost, let's go ahead and take a look at the new card printed in Modern Horizons Vesper Lark. So this is a card that I was actually really excited to brew with. Vesper Lark will evoke for two mana and return target creature with power one or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So when I take a look at that card, the first thing that I wanna break is the fact that it's any card with power, not converted mana cost. So let's go ahead and go up to our search bar. We're gonna do power, less than two. And let's take a look at what we got here. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. Yeah, I'm not gonna cover all that. So because this was in Modern Horizons and because Modern has a little bit of a smaller card pool, we'll, we'll try to focus on that a little bit more tonight. But let's go ahead and take everything from the format Modern. Wow, still a lot of results there. So if it's got one power and it's a common, I probably don't care about it. There are some notable exceptions like Devoted Druid, but let's just go ahead and remove all of the, let's uh, actually do that correctly. Rarity Common. Well, that cleaned up about 600 cards. So what exactly is Vesper Lark trying to do? Let's pull this guy back up. He's trying to reanimate something for a decent cost. So, you know what, let's just go big or go home. Anything with low converted mana, or high converted mana cost, but low power. You will note that the stars are actually noted as zero when they're outside of the game. So we get a cheat in things like Allosaurus Rider. We know how powerful that is with Grizzlebrand. We got a couple of the modular guys. This guy's modular six that grows every upkeep. Ooh, Draining Wilk. That's a fun commander card. But basically, we get to the point where we have 44 cards that have less than two power in the format of modern that are not common and have CMC greater than five. Well, we're down to 44 cards. Let's actually see if there's anything good for common. All right, well, there's about four more. And just because I'm curious, I keep doing that backwards. Common, Sunburst, ah, that will come in as a 1-1, one, one. doesn't really matter. Uh, zero six that has to return to its owner's hand, that, that's pretty bad. You can see why we kind of removed Common out of there. But, I mean, honestly, for Vesper Lark, taking any of these guys actually seems pretty viable. Marionette Master Strong, Multani Strong, Right, there are some good options here. Like this is a deck that I'm probably going to be brewing in the near future. Rollingwald Hydra can actually go get us any land. All right, well, I'm pretty satisfied with that. Next up, one of the cards I did want to play with was actually the new artifact from Commander. So we will use this in a information gathering way. So it was Commander 19. Ah, oh, look at that. We have some meta information on it, but I know the card that I wanted to look at was an artifact, so let's go ahead and search for an artifact. Wow, if I could actually spell things, that'd be great. 
Okay, we still have 24 cards. Well, this guy dealt with mana. This is him right here. So, enters the battlefield tapped. You can put a charge counter on it to add X mana of any one color, where X is the number of charge counters on it. So, this will get out of hand pretty quickly, but I need a reliable way to actually start untapping it. So, let's go ahead and take a look at this. We want, we want to be able to do this for multiple turns, but let's go ahead and start with untap, target, artifact. Okay, 46 cards. There's actually not a ton there, but this costs four mana and you have to tap it to do it. You have to tap to untap target artifact. So we want something where the Oracle text does not, that's what the stash is in here for. We're removing anything with the tap cost on it. Great, down to 28 cards. So uh, honestly, the sideways and three colors. It's also a sorcery. Yeah, we want something that's a permanent. So let's go ahead and just remove sorcery and instance. And that leaves us with 19 cards. All right, so we can start an engine where we tap two untapped artifacts to untap an artifact. Uh, if we have a lot of resources, that's actually pretty good. That'll get to be a lot of mana pretty quickly. Uh, whenever an artifact creature is put into the graveyard, you may untap an artifact. Okay, so that's already gonna require an infinite combo or an iterative combo to pay off, but that's worth keeping in the back of our minds. Field Grease Sages. So this card was mentioned by name when the card got spoiled, but if you can get to the point where our engine is generating three mana, this is infinite, so that's worth keeping a note of. Tap two untapped artifacts. Well, I mean, we kind of got cheesed on the verbiage there. Mind Over Matter is pretty good here. Tezzeret, as long as we can keep reactivating, is good. Voltaic Servant, not great. But, I mean, we have a couple of options. Like, there are some things that actually work with that card. And that's something we can build an EDH deck around. So, pretty happy with that one. Let's see what else we can do. Another fun card out of Modern Horizons was Collective Conjuring. So, this was exile the top six cards of your library. You may cast two sorcery cards with CMC three or less from among them without paying their mana cost. And then put the ones not cast on the bottom. So, first and foremost, let's try to keep our card pool a little bit smaller just for the sake of the video. We want to do it in format modern. CMC is less than four. And type is sorcery. So, that covers 691 cards. Uh, honestly, that's a lot. If you're trying to be a true deck builder, you could probably flip through some of these, but Angelic Purge requiring you to sack a permanent, ugh, not overly excited about that. So let's go ahead and just see if there are some cards already on some people's radars, just because that should help speed things up. We can sort by anything that's worth more than two bucks. I recognize a lot of these cards. So we get Blightning, Ancestral Vision, Anger, Blaze. Well, the way that the stack works, Blaze has X in its mana cost, and X will always be zero. So I actually don't want that. So let's go ahead and remove mana where it has an X in it. Down to 82 cards. Eh, we got some considerations here, but we can whittle it down. Next up, ID is less than or equal to is it. It's a blue-red card. Let's hope that we want to cast something in blue-red. Collective Defiance is really strong. Days Undoing is pretty strong. Faith is Saluting. Ooh, we get Goblin Lore? Yeah, Goblin Lore is pretty good. That means we also get Burning Inquiry. I must have skipped past that one. Nope. Well, this would actually lean me towards an R set, so this might be a deck I'm playing in the near future. We can do Collective Conjuring with a lot of the draw discards and just run an R set and actually try to cheese out the win that way. Well, that's another brew I'm pretty happy with. Next up... I am a huge fan of my commander decks. And yeah, everybody has to have pimp, pimp basics. So we're gonna go ahead and go with basic. I want unique art. Then I'm actually a fan of the old school magic. I started playing in Mercadian Mass and played through Onslaught. So let's take a look at the 1997 lands. There's some pretty good ones here, but I also like to bling my deck, so let's go ahead and flag it for foil. Well, we got some good options here. 
Well, in all reality, I probably just want a swamp. We have 31 cards that can be foil and can also be a swamp. But you know what? I actually need like 25 of them for phage. So let's go ahead and flag US dollars less than, I don't know, three bucks is probably fair. And that leaves me with some pretty solid options for 1997 bordered swamps that are somewhat affordable, but should actually work for my deck. So this is something that you can do with just about anything that you care about. And we can do forest, islands, basically just whatever we feel like. Of note, we can also do frame 1997 and actually tag this with, ah, my mouse got away from me. Let's actually say frame 1997 or, oh, I don't remember what this is. So let's go to syntax. This is gonna have most of the information that you want on it, but yeah, I want something featured in a masterpiece set. There we go. And I don't need basic. And these are all possible cards that would actually fit into the borders of my deck or potentially have something kind of fancy I don't mind slipping in here. So one of the cards that could probably fit would be Damnation. I'm assuming that this should be in here because it's technically a masterpiece. Aggravated Assault. Yep. Well, I mean, we hit everything we needed to there. And I think the last thing that I actually really want to cover was I played as a kid back in Mercadian Masks until 8th edition. And I know a lot of people have experienced this, especially when they're coming back to Magic. But one of the things that we can do is actually date. And I actually already have it here. So this is everything that's been printed after Mercadian Masks and before 8th edition. And it's worth more than 10 bucks. So I can go through my collection of old cards here and see if I have any of these. So I know I had an Aura Shards. I had a couple of Birds of Paradise. Uh, this Birds of Paradise might actually be getting flagged from Alpha Edition because it does kind of take in previously known cards. But we do get to find out, like, Bearscape. Aurelia made it so that people actually wanted to play this card. And I'm pretty sure I had a play set. This was basically a bulk rare back when I used to play. We also get the Ball, pro uh, ball Lightning promo. So that was actually one of the Judge promos. Uh, all of the original Fetch Lands, Cabal Coffers. Yeah, all these cards are solid. These are all cards that I still play with today. And you can just go tag in whatever you used to play with and get in there. Well, that's about it. Without many questions, I can't really field anything else that anybody's looking for, but I will post this in the video description as well as timestamps. Basically, it's Squirrel Dealer Scryfall Cheat Sheet. So this does cover everything for title contained squirrel. You can just search for squirrel. Anything with the CMC1, essentially all those things we went over in the card layout and then we even have some more complex queries in here so one of the things i'm assuming is going to come up is different types of mana symbols this is green phyrexian two or green and then this last one is color green and it's also a hybrid so if we check this guy out hybrid green all over the place let's get rid of those guys and gotta remove the princes phyrexian Reaper King, Tower Above. So if you want to figure out how to cheat on mana, that's perfectly acceptable. Uh, this is something that G-Burn would run. The identity is less than or equal to black. The language is being printed in Russian, and it's got an old card frame on it. Don't know why he likes that, but you definitely get a selection of Russian cards, and you could probably just build a full mono black Russian deck. Yeah, 32 cards. Maybe not. It's close, though. Then I actually did use this while creating my Squirrel EDH deck. If the identity is less than equal to Bant, means that we can get colorless, Bant, and everything in between. Then it contains the oracle text of token or non-token, or Squirrel in the name, or Squirrel in the oracle text. It can potentially enter the battlefield since I use Brago, Karmic Guide, all that fun stuff, Panharmonicon. Or Cast Without Pain, it's mana cost. This is one of my favorite effects. The rarity is not common, and it's not a land. And multiple cards here, but if you're going to brew your own deck, you may as well brew your own deck. And I think that's about it. If you have any questions or would like help setting up a query, 
feel free to leave a comment here. Uh, I'm happy to try to set up Scryfall stuff. I hope I did them justice. If you are trying to search on Scryfall, a decent starting place is always going to be this syntax page. The syntax page does a full breakdown with most of the information I provided, if not more. In fact, it is more. Uh, then if you are trying to do queries on your own and you can't necessarily put together the statements, the advanced search is also very powerful. It's a little bit easier to use, GUI, all that fun stuff. But it's because of queries like this that I feel like most of the power is going to come from using your own statements. And I think that's all I've got. Well, thanks for sticking around. I do a bunch of fun decks for Squirrel Dealer. We've been running for about seven months now. If you'd like to check out our content, my schedule's on the left. We also have somebody scheduled for Tuesday, Thursdays. His name is Brad Wan. Uh, if you have a fun deck you'd like to share, I'd be happy to take a look at it. Feel free to send it to decks at squirreldealer.com. Also check us out on YouTube. Full history of all of our videos are up there. If you do like our content, our Squirrel Dealer staff account on Twitch will always be hosting us. If you'd like to reach out to me directly, feel free to hit me up on Reddit. And yeah, if you need some help, just let me know. And enjoy the rest of your night.